Mic check. One, two. Tom, use your word. Hey, you. That's original freedom. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of the Original Freedom Podcast. Back on the East Coast now with Tom again. From the West Coast. I'm back on the East Coast. Did I mess that up? No, already? you said it perfect. Oh yeah? Okay, yeah. Back from the West Coast, hanging with Scott for a little bit, and now we're back. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, man. good to have him back. And so, um, you know, one of the things that we're going to do today, it's it's a pretty cool episode, um, talking um, you know, more about some of the cool things that Tom has done in his time after the military, but things that can apply to, you know, really everybody that's listening or watching right now. Um, and that being, you know, some of the things that he's done, some of the work he's done with law enforcement agencies, uh, some of the cops kind of around the country or even oh, yeah. locally. Um, but it, it being on kind of ideals that you wouldn't necessarily think, um, you know, you think you might go in there talking, you know, tactically or, or other things, right. but, um, kind of a surprise as far as the content that was really talked to about, uh, you know, uh, you know, our, our law enforcement here at home, at home and some of the things that he's done, even parlaying into the stuff that warriors heart, I'm sure you're doing now too with the guys. That oh, come absolutely. Through. So, man. um, yeah. So, I, you know, I would just kick off the conversation with, um, you know, you, you and Scott have both gotten out of the military. I think that this, even he was kind of along for that bit of that ride too, working with some law enforcement oh, yeah. early on. Early on, we um, did. And, and what were some of the things that you were doing with them at that time? Yeah, so the things that we were doing with law enforcement, again, us transitioning and trying to figure out what the hell was going on, you know what I mean, and how to make money and, you know, be passionate and do all that kind of stuff. You know, for me, it was easy. I just stuck stuck with what I knew, you know, which was pistol, carbine, CQB, sniper, you know what I mean, all of that kind of stuff. That was a staple, and for Scott, it was explosives, you know what I mean? So we just, that's how we made our initial entry into uh, paying the bills, <laughs> you know what I mean, and then continue on the thing that he and I love doing the most, which is which is teaching, uh, teaching relevant information, you know, and uh, so when, when I started teaching, uh, it was mainly in the law enforcement we did some with the military and uh, just like what you were saying, most people would think it's like, okay, weapons manipulation, a marksmanship, you know what I mean? All the tactics of how to do it. And, uh, and although all of that is obviously super important and you have to know how to do those things, those are the things that are most easily taught. Uh, and so, uh, so that leads like, okay, well, what's the harder things to teach, you know, and, um, and nowadays they call it a lot, they'll call it mindset. Oh, we're going to do mindset training and that kind of things. But what it boiled down to is like, Hey, what do I do in the most, uh, whenever, whenever I'm in a situation that I've experienced more stress than I've ever experienced my whole life, how am I going to act? You know, how do I make decisions? Cause everybody always says, Hey, emotional decision making is horrible, right? Mm -hmm. We all know that. It's like, okay, so in this super intense, emotionally charged environment that's got me like off the Richter scale, like never experienced it before in my life, how do I perform my job in that? You mean, because that, I mean, it's the same way in sports, same way in life. It's like, hey, when things are going easy and things are good, like, hey, doing the job or me being me is easy, but like, hey, what do I do when I'm under stress? You know, because that forces all impurities out, right? <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, what happens then? Yeah. How did all that kind of come up? I mean, was it something that you guys got to or like when you, as soon as you started working with others, you were like, this is going to be a piece of what we're teaching and training on? Well, it, no. Initially, it wasn't like, hey, we're going to teach them about this. Oh. It came out um, basically because of how we taught and the topics that we were talking about. So for us, it was about gunfighting. And gunfighting defined, meaning that I am shooting at someone and they are shooting at me. <laughs> me shooting at someone is one aspect of it, but you know what I mean? Hey, what happens whenever it's two-way range? You know what I mean? Whenever that piece is going on, um, you know, what what do I need to think about? How do, What do I need to do? What motivates me? you know, how do I stay focused, all those different things. So whenever it came, because we had that mindset, because of the extensive combat background, you know what I mean, that we have, um, that's the important stuff that we were teaching them. Because we know they could go to 
countless other great instructors, three gun guys, all, I mean, way better marksmen than me. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as whenever it came to, um, you know, application of gun handling skills and that kind of stuff. So where our bread and butter was, is like, Hey, let's talk about gunfights. You know, let's talk about, you know, Hey, what it's like to get into a rifle fight inside a house. You know, that's, <laughs> that's going to be, which is what our law enforcement, you know what I mean? Guys, you know what I mean? They, and gals, you know what I mean? Deal with, you know, depending on the city, but sometimes on a daily basis, you know, and, uh, and not that we were the end all be all, but I mean, we knew that the information that we were given out to them uh, was gospel, you know, cause a gunfight's a gunfight's a gunfight, whether it's in Baghdad or Baltimore, um, you know what I mean? The rules of engagement kind of change, but the things that you do when bullet starts flying, uh, don't change. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so that's that's that was kind of our niche that we stayed in. Again, we always stayed just within our experience, and that was some information that we could that we knew we could provide to uh, law enforcement uh, that the majority of them currently didn't have. Mm -hmm. You know, because um, a lot of, I mean, the, you'll have a lot of folks that they may have pulled their their gun out. You know what I mean? Several times in in their experience of being law enforcement, some that never have. But we had just been in so many day after day after day that you you get a lot of lessons learned, you know, and it proofs out of like, hey, what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So getting into kind of that mindset talk, what were some of the things like where would you start with them? Yeah. So, you know, and that's where we where we always talk about uh, in in dealing with stress and specific tactically tactical and stressful tactical environment. You know, it's a, uh, first of all, is like, I have to know who I am and what I stand for, you know, and I have to know, um, what's my order of loyalty, you know what I mean? Of like, uh, that, that is my guide whenever I'm having to make life and death decisions. And most folks don't even know to how, some of them have never been presented with that concept, mm -hmm. you know, cause a lot of us, the big, uh, gung ho who rob bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I'll get in there and I'll just, you know, that, it never happens that way. <laughs> so whenever it comes down to it, it's like, hey, to how do I keep a cool head in the most stressful environment and perform my job, you know what I mean, and save people? And how do I do that? Mm -hmm. So, and again, like, was that something that, what what's the light bulb moment where you're like, that is is super important and that's something that everyone should should think about you know what i mean because i think you guys you guys draw so much from your experience i'm assuming that that kind of came from that's how you handled your stress or is that something that was kind of laid down and taught as well to uh, well you? now that we're talking about it the things that really bring it into crystal clear focus um and then rewinding from that is is that a uh, worst case scenario happens uh, a teammate you know what I mean? Someone that I work with gets killed. You know what I mean? Obviously, hey, it's in the profession. I mean, you know it could happen. You do everything for it not to, but hey, it's it's going to happen. And um, it's like, okay, then you start rewinding that piece. Did we train the best that we could? You know what I mean? To, and did I do everything within my power to enable them to do it? And then to bring it even further home is like, hey, how I have to have conducted myself in a manner in which I could live with. Um, so the thing is, is that when you rewind that stuff and you look at the reality of all of it, especially whenever it comes, what's in the military, but especially with the law enforcement, is like a, when, when a teammate dies, it's not like, okay, yeah, the, they died, the funeral happens, super sad, you know what I mean, just horror, tragedy event, all that, and then we move on to the next thing. It's like, no, then I see their kids that live in my neighborhood. Then I see their wife every day. You know what I mean? And I see them in the grocery store and I see them in this, like, how am I going to be able to look at them in the eyes and say, hey, I, and know to myself, not say to them, but know to myself that, hey, I did everything within my power uh, to enable that not to happen, you know, but, but it happened and I know that I did everything that I could. So that was kind of like the, the focal point of rewinding, like, okay, if that's the answer, if the answer is, is like, well, I've got to be able to live with the actions that, that happened. It's like, okay, well, how do I get ready for that? How do I, how to prepare, you know what I mean, for the worst thing to happen? How do I prepare for, 
being able to put my head down on the pillow and go to sleep, still be ultimately obviously sad about losing a friend and a teammate. Um, but to know that I did all that I could do, you know, how do you even begin to prepare yourself, you know what I mean, for that kind of an event? So what was kind of the reception that you guys would get as far as like coming through Delta guys, decorated military uh-huh. careers and the first, not the first thing I wouldn't, I wouldn't pretend to know that, but one of the main things you guys talk about is, okay, you got to figure out who you are and what you stand for. Mm-hmm. What was some of the reception that you guys got when that even first came out or even today when you talk with people like that? Well, it. You know, it's uh, at first they don't see, you know, because it's all in the flow, you know, in the curriculum that we had up for the course, obviously, you know, doing the tactical pieces and train firearms training and piece. But we know inevitably that these things are going to come up, you know, and, and we know ultimately that those are the most important things, you know. So a lot of times, you know, some guys, it, it all depended on the experience level of the individuals. You know, some of the newer guys are kind of like, hey, why are we talking about this? Cause they just didn't have any context, you know what I mean? Of, of really having to deal with that. So some of the, so to your answer, your question, you know, some of the guys will be like, Hey, this isn't some personal development class, man. I'm learning how to like shoot people, you know what I mean? And be, and be good at it, you know? And then, but then you run into, you know, the experience and the older guys, you know, uh, maybe not even older, just a lot more experience. You know, you started saying stuff like that. They were immediately dialed in. They were like, Whoa, like, yep. These are guys that know and what they're talking about because they, you know, I mean, had some context for it. So it was a mixed bag, you yeah. know what I mean, of, uh, of the younger guys or less experienced guys and gals and, and the more experienced ones. And how do you see that kind of playing out for, you know, those that listening? Because even me who has not served in the military, who is, was not in law enforcement, that's still those two questions are hugely impactful for me. How do you see... What do you see the the role in knowing those things for, you know, a civilian, normal kind of walk of life, family yeah. guy, family woman, you know what I mean? How does that play a role in their life? It plays a huge role yeah. um, because, and again, I use the context of talking about military and combat and first responders. It's easier to begin to talk in that context first because uh, the consequences mm-hmm. are death. You know, consequences are life and death. So kind of set the context with that piece of like, okay. And then it's like, to your point of like, okay, well, I don't have a profession and I'm not walking around, you know what I mean? Where that's going to happen. I, you know, ha- I don't have one of those kind of jobs. Um, the things and the principles that are guiding, you know what I mean? In those intense situations immediately translate over um, uh, into the just regular everyday living. Uh, because it's a rule and guide of how I conduct myself mm-hmm. in my behavior, who I'm loyal to, um, the things that go to mind, the pre-made decisions that I might make, you know, hey, how I'm going to, you know, tragedies happen, you know, all the time, you know, I mean, all over the U.S., you know, it's like, hey, how am I going to be the guy that is there that makes the right decisions in the stressful times? Um, how am I going to do that? It's this principally is the exact same things that we, we've taught tactically 100% translate over. The only thing that doesn't 100% translate over is the consequence. You know, the consequence there might be life or death. The consequence here, me may that I can't sleep at night because I'm living in cru- incongruent, you know what I mean? Or that I'm not living an authentic life, you know, and speaking my truth and a piece of my soul is dying. And, you know, so that the consequence is a little bit different, but... I don't think any less. How and so you kind of talked about it er, earlier the the order of loyalty and you touched on pre-made decisions earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, go, go into a little bit about that. Obviously, in a time of stress and a time and the way I interpret it is kind of in a moment where you're where you can't really where you don't have time to think essentially. Exactly. Um, There's no time. You already know it. You already carry it out. Um, what are some of the ways? Like what 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 are some scenarios where pre-made decisions where I'll just start you there for that. Okay. That, that, that so comes pre-made in. decisions. So in order for me to make any kind of pre-made decisions, I have to know where my loyalties lie. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we talk through it, it'll become more clear. Uh, but just as an example, and it's one we've used in classes all the time 
is uh, we use an example of, of like, hey, me and my wife are walking down the street. You know what I mean? Pick a street, any neighborhood, any time. Uh, it can happen to anyone at any time. Guy pops out around the corner, you know, puts a puts a gun or a knife in my face, you know, and says, uh, hey, give me your wallet. You know, what would I do? You know, a lot of people be like, oh, you'd take his gun and you'd kick his ass. And you know what I mean? And it's like, no, I'd give him my wallet. Um, you know what I mean? Because, because I know there's nothing in my wallet that's worth, you know, that guy dying over. You know what I mean? Or this, or the situation getting any out of control. It's very easy. Take my wallet. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's one scenario. And then the exact same scenario is, you know, after I've given the guy my wallet, you know, that's a pre-made decision that I've made. You know what I mean? Because, like, you know, I'm not loyal to anything that's in this wallet. I mean, it sucks. I'm going to be pissed, you know. It's going to take one. so long to get my yeah. driver's license. But I'm not going to put, you know I mean, what I am loyal to, to, you know, which is my wife, at risk, you know, for this to happen. You know, it's very clear to me. And then this, by the same token, if the guy that just asked me for my wallet, I gave him my wallet. And then he said, like, okay, now I'm taking your wife. Then I kill him. Like, there's no thought. There's no decision making. Like, I've already thought about these things because I understand uh, my order of loyalty. You know what I mean? I understand what I'm loyal to and why. You know, so, and again, you hit it on a key subject is because is everybody likes to think is, I'll have time. You know, oh, some event goes down, like, I'll have time to figure it out. No, you won't. You know what I mean? No one ever does. You know, it's like, no, I've already in other way, or it's, or it's going to be an emotional decision, right? Like, cause of course my emotions are going to be completely through the roof. And now if I don't have a pre-made decision, I'm going to decide there, you know, maybe I decide like, oh, I'm going for it. I'm going to kick this guy's ass and take his gun. And then me and him are fighting. The gun goes off, kills my wife. Like, okay, that, that risk equal and gain that was not there you know what i mean so again it, it sounds um uh, complex but i mean re- we we rewind it all the back to like hey it's very simple if i have those pre-made decisions and understand my loyalties and then so on order of loyalty um being another concept that you kind of talked about that being uh you know the the pre-made decisions being in an instant that you don't have time to think and if you do it's either emotional or it's not the way that you want it to go. Yeah. In in the in the way of taking the time of figuring out your order of loyalty, take them through kind of your thought around that and some sometimes that that plays out. Yeah, because it's 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 ultimately important that I understand. And again, all these concepts, you know, were presented to me. You know, what I mean, a lot of them I learned along the way. You know what I mean? And just kind of figuring stuff out and talking with guys. But other times were concepts presented to me. And it's like, it's like, okay, wh- you know, hey, what, you know, we were talking about it earlier when it's like, hey, who am I loyal to? Who am I loyal to? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, my whole family. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, you know, to everyone, you know what I mean? And my whole family meaning like, Hey, my wife and my children, but also my aunts, my uncles, you know, my grandparents, you know, all this kind of stuff. There's not enough me to go around. You you know what I mean? That's a wonderful concept. You know what I mean? Where, and, and I, you know, I mean, we try to do that the best that we can, but, uh, you know, at the end, I'm, you know I mean? I'm, I'm kind of piecemealing myself and, and, and things are getting lost, you know? And, uh, so, uh, one way of like, if, as a process of like, Hey, how am I going to, uh, define, you know, what is order, uh, what this order of loyalty is, you know, it's, uh, and one way of doing it is like, think of a, of a horrible scenario, <laughs> you know? So none of this is fun. You know, one the thing I want to say out there, like this whole concept, it, not that it's not fun and it doesn't really feel good. Cause we don't really like to think about like, Hey, having to choose, you know, and, uh, but just understand that like this kind of exercise is only for myself. You know I mean? I'm just going through this exercise. So I have a better understanding, you know, of, of who and what I'm loyalty to loyal to and why. And so, I mean, even if you just imagine that there is like, Hey, you know, Titanic kind of thing where the, Hey, the ship's sinking and, uh, you know, and everybody's going to freeze to death. You got one life, one lifeline, you know what I mean? That you're sending to one person at a time, uh, put everybody that you love, you know what I mean? And, and that you, you know, and it's important to you in your, in your life, you know, in that boat. And, um, uh, and then, then you start saving them, you know, one, who are you going to go to first? 
who are you going to go to second, you know, and, uh, and all the way down, you know, and, and, and there's just some hard decisions in there, you know, and again, uncomfortable, like we don't like thinking about that. But again, this exercise is super important for me to know. And uh, like we were talking about also, it's not important that, hey, you're number six and you're number seven. So not getting that granular. I mean, if you need to, I mean, by all means, go ahead, you know, but it's basically it's just to set my mindset, you know, and really to get me to hone in of like, hey, what is super important, you know, I mean, to me and who I am loyal to. I think it's something that's also interesting, too, is another thing we kind of talked about. Um, before coming on was like everyone would love to be known as or I wouldn't say everyone I would think An the majority attribute. of people yeah. would like to be known as loyal mm-hmm. uh, if, if from from an outside perspective if you asked one of your friends if you asked so you know that they're there for you that they whatever it is if you're in need that kind of thing that um, that that's how you would like to be recognized I think something that's another uncomfortable piece is if for some reason you went through this exercise and you realize, I'm not really loyal to anybody. Yeah. Um, not saying that that happens for everybody. There is a chance, though, <laughs> that, and I think it's just being an honest moment with yourself that it's like, I want to be portrayed this way. I want to be seen this way. But are my actions really doing that? Yeah, man. And, and you know, not to say that you wouldn't, whatever it is, if you're, you know, the thing that you want to be most loyal to, it's also kind of, an accountability piece of am I am I acting that out or am yeah. I letting other things getting in the way yeah. yeah and I mean it goes for just like you said it goes both ways it's it's just a really good self reflection and in some cases for some folks you know a discovery mm-hmm. you know like you may discover like wow I don't like what I see like I don't want to do that and how awesome of a piece of information is that because then you can choose to do something about it mm-hmm. and make it and make it differently and uh, and then some people may find um, that they're loyal to themselves yeah. like they're the number one on the list and uh, those kind of folks I'm don't really hang out with but I mean hey that's okay you yeah. know what I mean everybody's different and there's nothing wrong with that either I mean I portrayed it as a wrong light but you know, again, it's it's so important that I know my loyalties, and then also it's super important, especially f- for those that are close to me and my co, that they understand mine also. Mm-hmm. You know, because that just makes for great interactions. You know, because I know that way. If I know I'm getting ready to ask you a question that might compromise, you know, or ask you to do something that'll compromise what I know to be your number one priority in your life, which is your family, um, I can kind of expect that that you're probably going to say no, you know, and I really can't be mad about that because like, Hey, you've been a grown ass man and said like, Hey Tom, this is who I am, what I stand for. And this is my order of loyalty, you know? And, uh, and so it just makes things very clean. It makes even interaction, um, that much more clean and yeah. understandable. Yeah. And I think too, you know, just another natural piece is to see that if, you know, you you if you never asked yourself the question, you never you never know really how yeah. what how that order falls. But really, it's uh, what reigns strong to me is like you can clearly see too that I'm spreading myself a little thin. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a wrong thing. Uh, you know, the, a wrong way that people live their lives, or you know, I've I've done it. I'm sure a lot of people yeah. do of of course wanting to make everyone happy. Uh, and I think I reached a point in my life where I saw that doing that sometimes doesn't make anyone happy because yeah. you're compromising in all areas yeah. rather than devoting your attention, your energy toward what really matters to you rather than trying to please others. Absolutely, man. And then uh, let's say just, you know, big pieces like work, family, instead of, you know, really getting into the nitty gritty of order, you know what I mean? But hey, my let's say let's say in my mind, let's say I've gone, haven't gone through this exercise and this is, I'm giving you my personal example, you know what I mean? Where I haven't really at one time hadn't clearly defined this. And it's like, Hey, my family is number one, right? In my mind and my intention and everything is like, Hey, my family's number one. But then when I got to look at my actions, you know, work was getting all my enthusiasm, was getting all my attention was getting a majority of my time. And then my family was pretty much getting, not pretty much, my family was getting the leftovers. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and it, and it was confusing to me because it's, it was like when, in my heart, you know, I mean, I love them more. I'm into my job. It's like, hey, why don't I feel good about what's happening? And I didn't realize I wasn't being congruent with myself. You know, it's like, hey, well, and because in my mind, you know, I mean, they don't know my family's first, but then this was happening. Once I realized that there was no congruency within myself and in my reality, you know, of those around me, then I was given the choice, you know, I mean, of, of, rem of letting it ride, you know what I mean? And stay in suffering and misery, you know, and, uh, and or, or correcting it, you know, and then, so, I mean, that it's such a valuable tool, you know what I mean? Uh, to be able to do that. And for me, it's to be able to do that because there come times, you know, where I could set with the family and be like, Hey, we're getting ready to come up on a really hard three month stretch, you know what I mean? Where, Hey, I'm going to compromise a lot of the things that we've established. And that's me being as home as much as I can, all of that kind of stuff. It's like, but it's for the big picture of getting, and I hate when people say like, it's just, Oh, the greater good, the big picture, all that stuff. But whenever it's communicated and there's a why behind it, and then there's an end state for it, you know what I mean? Then it's like, and then a decision is made about it. Then it, it then it makes it okay. You know, um, but just kind of, bumping through life i mean it creates a lot of unhappiness right. for everyone that i want to be happy <laughs> you know yeah yeah and it just comes to, it seems that like every a lot of the material we talk about um it always it's it's obviously introspective but it always comes back to uh you know knowing for yourself like knowing who you are you know yeah. what you stand for what's important to you because if you don't and and, and you're just kind of in this constant state of being pulled in different directions yeah. or because or, or they're going to pull inconsistent behavior and you're all over the place and that natural um you know to, we i mean we constantly term it as suffering or that natural state of unhappiness or or i don't know why you know even in the, the scenario you played out that if you're not aware kind of of what those things that are most important to you are um it's probable that that's going to be the case for you yeah and everyone else man yeah. So understanding, you know, I mean, the order of loyalty in my life, you know, what I mean, with the people in my life, with the institutions in my life, um, understanding who and what I'm loyal to, loyal to, you know, really drives the the second and third order effects of the decisions that I have to make. So uh, I can't emphasize enough how important it it was for me to go through this exercise and. Um, you know, for everyone out there, just take some time, you know what I mean? And ask yourself those questions, you know, of, of who am I, you know, what do I stand for, you know, and really go through, a, you know, any kind of variation of that uh, loyalty exercise, you know what I mean? Just so you have a better picture in your mind of all the different things that we discussed. I can't emphasize how it seems very simple, but it, and it is simple, but the impact that it makes is, is huge. Yeah. Well said. And with that, that'll wrap up this week's episode of uh, the Original Freedom Podcast on the order of loyalty. Um, we're going to split this up. We'll have a part two on uh, and kind of continue this conversation next week when we get into some uh, some other details branching off of loyalty and the things that come with it and, and figuring that out for yourself. We'll see you next week in that part two episode. Take care.